Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And today we're going to be solving the lead code question, minimum cost to move chips to the same position. All right, so in this question, we have n chips where the position of the ith chip is position i. We need to move all the chips to the same position. In one step, we can change the position of i chip from position i to, and over here we have two options, okay? So we can move a particular chip by any of these two options. So one of the options is we can move it two steps on the right direction or the left direction. And in that case, when we move it by two steps in either direction, our cost is going to be zero. And another thing that we could do is we can move it by one step. So we can move it by one step in the right direction, or we can move it by one step in the left direction. And in either case, when we move it by one step, our cost over here becomes one. And our goal is to return the minimum cost needed to move all the chips to the same position. All right, so real quickly, uh, let's just say, so this is how our uh, chips are starting off at. So we have one at one, one at two, one at three, okay? And at the very ending, what needs to happen is they all need to be at the same position. Where that same position is doesn't matter, but no, they have to be at some sort of same position. So in this case, they're all stacked up at one. And in this case, in order to get that answer, what happened is that we moved three by two spots. And when you move something by two spots, you actually don't uh, have a cost. So you have a cost of zero. So in that case, the cost still remains zero. But over here, we had to remove uh, two to one by one spot. So when you're moving it by one spot, so we're moving green to the left by one spot, the cost increases by one. So the cost equals one. So in this case, that is exactly what our cost is. So to move three, we have a cost of zero, but to move two, we have a cost of one. And when you add that up, our cost becomes one and that's what we output. Okay, so now let's see how we can solve this question. And the solution to this is kind of clever. And yeah, let's just see how it looks like. Okay, so this is how it's going to work. So let's just draw out a few of our values. Let's say we have a position, sorry. So the position start off at one. So we're gonna start off with position one, position two, position three, four, and five, okay? So this can keep going on and the number of positions we have can go on forever. And actually just to kind of show you that, let me just show you one example, which is this one over here. So this over here, uh, we have two uh, coins, okay? So we have one of them at position one, and we have another at this massive value, right? So it's 10 to the power of something, it's a pretty big value. But over here, the answer is one. So how do we actually compute something like this? So one thing we could do is we can kind of simulate the movement, right? We can keep moving it, but simulating something like this would take a lot of time. But a lot easier thing we could do is, let's just notice, so when you have an even number of values, right? You can directly move it all the way to the left. And in this case, by moving it by two spots, you're actually not losing anything, right? Because when you move something by two spots, the cost is zero. So really all that happened here, so let's just kind of visualize this, okay? So we had something, uh, I'll just draw it over here. So we had uh, something at one, okay? So we had something over here and we had something at uh, 10 to the power of some really big number. Let's just assume it's 10 to the power of nine. And we had another, uh, we had a token over here or a coin. So now what really happened over here is we kept moving this to the left, okay? So we kept moving it to the left until we reached the point where it got to the number two. So in this case, and how do we know that it kept going to number two? So each step we moved it by two. And if you do 10, to, so this over here is an even number. So when you divide an even number by two, you're going to get a remainder of zero. So that means it perfectly fits in and we can move it all the way to the left. And by moving it all the way to the left, what's happening is you're telling that this value is going to end up at two. So once it reaches two, we cannot move it any more further to the left, right? So two is kind of the end point. So now we have uh, one of the tokens, we moved it all the way here and note that the cost is still zero. The cost remains to be zero because we moved it by two times. Now we have one of two options. We can either move this over by one or we can move this over by one. And in either case, it doesn't matter because you're moving it by one step. So in this case, the cost is always going to be one. So kind of going by the idea, I think it's kind of easy to identify that whether the number is even or odd is pretty important. And we're gonna use that idea to solve our question. So let's say we have something at three, let's say two tokens at three, two at five, and one at two, and one at one. So now what we're going to do is we're going to move all of the tokens to the leftmost as possible. Now, the way that we're going to be moving them is we're gonna move it in such a way 
that we're always going to move it by two units. So by doing this, all of the tokens are either going to be at one or two. So how do we know which one is going to end up at, uh, at which place? So if the token ends up at one, we know it is an odd number, okay? And the reason for that is because let's look at three. So let's say we move this by two spots. So we go over here and then here again. So every time we have something with an odd number, it is going to end up at one. And this all happens at a cost of zero because we're moving it over by two steps. So now let's just move everything on three to the left, okay? So we're gonna move this by two units, so one, two. So everything is going to end up at one. So let's just kind of draw a division just so you can understand. So it comes over here and one comes over here. And since we moved everything, this kind of arrays itself. So can we move whatever is at two? So no, right? Because there's nothing, uh, it starts off at one. So we can't move anything to the left of two. So currently, this is just gonna stay as it is. But how about whatever is at five? So the number at five, we're gonna move it over by two. So it comes here and then comes here. So now it's at three. But we can move it again by two steps. So we're gonna do that again. So we're gonna move it by two steps and it's now going to be at one. So now let's just uh, draw those two as well. So one moves here and another one moves over here. So now you can see these are all of the values that end up moving to one by moving it, by moving that certain number of tokens by two steps and the cost currently is still zero and actually just for the sake of question this question let's just add uh, two values at four okay so let's say when you add two values at four what's going to happen is that well they're going to move by two and since it's an even number it's going to end up at two so over here we're going to have the two numbers that we're talking about okay so now everything has come down to one and two so the only thing that we need to do is we need to choose the minimum between whatever is at one versus whatever is at two. And the reason we're choosing the minimum is because, so in this case, the minimum is two. So now what's going to happen is we're gonna move everything over here by one step to the left. So in this case, we're gonna be moving three things to the left. Or another thing we could do is we can move all of this to the right. But obviously there's more things over here. So that means we need to move more things and that's gonna cost us more. So we're gonna choose the minimum between whatever is at one and whatever, whatever is at two. Now let's simplify even more. So a better way to say this is everything at one is odd and everything at two has an even position in the beginning. So all we can do is we can count the number of even numbers and the number of odd numbers and just choose the minimum between those two. All right, so hopefully you kind of understood the idea behind this. So the question itself is pretty simple uh, once you understand how this idea works. All right, so now let's just look at the code part and see how that works. Okay, so all we're really doing is counting the number of even and odd numbers we have. So let's just have two numbers. So let's call one of them even and let's call the other one odd. And they're both gonna start off at a value of zero. Okay, so zero comma zero. Okay, so now that we have our two values, all we need to do is we're gonna uh, iterate through each of our positions. So to do that, I'll just do for X in position, okay? So now we're gonna be getting each of our positions in the value x, okay? And now all we're checking is we're checking if the position is odd or even. So let's first check if the position over here is even. So if x mod two is equal to zero, that means it's even. And in that case, we, we're gonna increase the count for our even numbers. And if that is not the case, well, we know that it's going to be an odd number. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our odd numbers and we're gonna increase its count by one number. Okay, so by the ending of this, we're gonna be accounting for all of our positions, and now we need to return our value. And the value that we're going to end up returning is just going to be the minimum between the even value and the odd value, because, well, we want the least amount of uh, cost, right? So now let's submit this, and so this is supposed to be position, sorry, okay. And as you can see, our submission did get accepted. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. Do let me know if you have any questions, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you. Thank you.